U.S. Navy tested the world's first laser weapon system the other day. This system of directing energy as a weapon is based off Nikola Tesla's work, which he attempted to share with the U.S. military during the last decade of his life. Tesla too had experimented with lasers or rays, but his experimentations showed that these rays disperse with distance, just like the weapon above does. So Tesla went in another direction and used microscopic particles in his defense weapon instead, which he coined a particle beam. Tesla's device was a natural extension of his high-frequency work after he produced 100-foot-long sparks, or artificial lightning, in his laboratory experiments. The next step was to control and direct this energy as a weapon. The device he proposed was a open vacuum tube that could charge small or large particles to millions of volts and project these highly charged, non-dispersive particles through free air to bring down hundreds of enemy airplanes. The Tesla weapon would be more destructive as opposed to just heating the target point. Particle beams would have inertial mass being beamed along with high-energy photonic phase conjugation. Tesla laser is actually made up of several lasers. The weapon combines multiple fiber laser modules to form a single, powerful, high-quality beam. This is only a prototype, and Tesla intends on scaling it to 60 kilowatts. The 60 kilowatts version is due in 2022 and expected to be mounted on an adapted army truck, essentially putting the laser on wheels. Multiple fiber lasers could be scaled to up to 500 kilowatts, which should provide an extraordinary punch and dramatically alter the course of the battlefield. There would be no need for ammunition, just a very powerful energy source, and since laser beams travel virtually instantaneous, they would provide a significant tactical advantage. Tanks, aircraft, battleships could all become seriously challenged in the future. We're entering a new age of warfare. The time for futuristic laser weapons is almost upon us. Of course, the weapon's main focus is defensive rather than offensive. The laser can defend against small rockets, artillery shells and mortars, small unmanned aerial vehicles, small attack boats, and lightweight ground vehicles that are approximately a mile away. It's still a bit too close for comfort, but this is just a stepping stone for even greater things to come. As fiber laser power levels increase, our systems will be able to disable larger threats and do so across greater distances. The Navy envisions it being used for precision and covert engagements, starting fires, and what it calls graduated lethality. It also sees it as a countermeasure against UAVs, missiles, and swarms of small boats. Laser also has the advantage of having a deep magazine, meaning that it doesn't need propellants or explosives and can keep firing as long as a power source is available. Also, unlike conventional weapons, each round comes at a bargain price. Our conservative data tells us a shot of directed energy costs under $1. Compare that to the hundreds of thousands of dollars it costs to fire a missile, and you can begin to see the merits of this capability. However, since flat-out fighting is rare in naval operations, less lethal applications for the laser system are more likely to be used on a daily basis and therefore of equal value. The optics that Tesla uses for its beams make it ideal for targeting, and the laser can also heat targets, making them easier for infrared tracking to lock on. In addition, the laser can dazzle pilots and electronics of aircraft, surface vehicles, or submarines. Electro-optical sensors and infrared missile systems are particularly vulnerable. Laser also works as a 21st century version of a shot across the bow, by shining an intense beam of light warning the target that a lethal blast could follow instantly. One important challenge is to make the system cope better with atmospheric phenomena like fog, rain, and airborne sand and dust, which can slash the infrared laser beam's power and range. Weather is an issue for any optical weapon system. What's more, the system can track agile targets that quickly change direction, and of course its beams travel at the speed of light. And whereas missile systems need to be reloaded for reuse, a laser can be fired repeatedly so long as the truck has enough power and the weapon can be adequately cooled between shots. For all its advantages, laser has its limitations. For example, the rate of fire is restricted by the time needed to illuminate a target and then moving on to the next one, so the system can be overwhelmed. Also, lasers aren't ideal in all situations or against all targets, so it needs to be teamed with another weapon that can put lots of iron into the air at the same time. The deployment is partly a demonstration, but it's also part of the testing and development program. 
Areas that need addressing are developing the gimbal mounting for the laser, hardening the hardware for a C environment, dealing with optical turbulence, and evaluating how to use the laser in less than lethal tasks. Designing a laser that is powerful enough to take out a mortar shell from a mile away is a huge engineering challenge. The way it is done is through a technique known as spectral beam combination, whereby multiple outputs of beams are combined into a single high power beam rather than using a single individual fiber laser. Think of a prism that breaks up a white light beam into the colors of the rainbow. High power lasers run this process in reverse, combining a bunch of beams that cover different spectrums of electromagnetic energy and outputting a single beam. Laser weapon development was ramped up in the past decade as a response to the rising threats of armed drones and short-range mortars or rocket barrages. These unguided projectiles can't be put out of action with sophisticated countermeasures, such as jamming or redirecting. The timeline of a rocket or mortar impact is also very short. Although the first such system cost $32 million, in the longer run, it will be tremendously affordable. In this rapidly evolving threat landscape, laser weapons suddenly become appealing. For instance, the US Navy has an ongoing program called Helios, High Energy Laser and Integrated Optical Dazzler and Surveillance, which aims to install a laser weapon system on a DDG Arleigh Burke class destroyer. The Air Force is currently testing the High Energy Laser Weapon System 2, made by Raytheon Space and Airborne Systems, with the primary goal of disabling enemy drones. The U.S. Army isn't sitting idle either. These recent 50 kilowatts trials represent a bold and major step forward in the Army's ambitions to deeply laser weapons on the battlefield of the future, where it currently faces a gap in short-range air defense. The environmental impacts on the laser system have been characterized and our efforts continue in this area. Changes can be made to the laser's wavelength to adapt to the weather to make it less likely to be absorbed. Adaptive optics can be used to counteract the effects of atmospheric turbulence too. Another unknown is safety. A beam that misses its target could hit friendly vessels, aircraft, or satellites. The safety aspects of firing a laser, knowing what is behind the target, and the rules of engagement for this new type of weapon continue to evolve. All branches of the U.S. military have experimented with lasers, but those based on chemical lasers such as the Airborne Laser, an aircraft-mounted anti-ballistic missile weapon, and the Tactical High Energy Laser, which targets artillery rockets, were abandoned partly because of the huge power supply needed, one that required six trucks to transport, in the case of the Thel. But a modern truck is able to generate a lot of electricity, more than enough to power a laser weapon. The U.S. is already looking at the possible countermeasures its lasers will meet, like drones and boats with very shiny laser-reflecting surfaces or novel heat-absorbing materials that dissipate heat very quickly. Expect lasers to deter attacks. Knowing a truck has a laser has a strong psychological effect. It's the stuff of Star Wars. Adversaries won't want to try their drone's luck against a laser. Offering lethality against unmanned aircraft systems UAS, and rockets, artillery and mortars RAM, laser weapons now increase Army air and missile defense capability while reducing total system life cycle cost through reduced logistical demand, the Army said in a statement. I know the people out there who are opposed to war will be upset at Tesla's work, but they should understand that Tesla was opposed to war as well. He just understood the necessity for defense against brutes who have no morality. His proposal was to make war impossible by giving every country equal defense against the evils of this world. That's all for today. Please subscribe if you liked it.